Hello again, I'm Tom Abrams. This week in Texas, we're focusing on your property taxes at the start of this year's legislative session. Leaders in the House and the Senate and Governor Abbott told us that property tax relief was among their top priorities. But after the 140-day regular session, the House and the Senate could not agree on a plan. So Governor Abbott then called a special session to address it. But there is still no agreement, and a second special session seems likely. So what are the House and the Senate plans? Both have agreed to set aside more than $17.6 billion of the state's surplus to lower property taxes. The House plan would lower taxes for all property owners through what's called compression, they would take all of that 17 plus billion and give it to the school districts for their maintenance and operation. Then school districts would in turn lower their tax rates to account for the money the legislature gives them. The Senate plan would take 70% of that 17 plus billion and apply it to compression. But with the other 30%, it would raise the homestead exemption across the state from $40,000 to $100,000. This week, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick held a press conference in Houston to call out the House and Speaker Dade Phelan. ABC 13's Shannon Ryan was there. Tension coming to a head Tuesday with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick hosting a press conference to chastise members of his own party. I'm getting fed up with misinformation put out about the property tax bill by the Speaker of the House and by the House. Patrick, who heads the Senate, is advocating on behalf of their property tax plan, which is different from the House's. I don't know if I would call it misinformation. It's just, I think where the House has found itself is that they're being forced to support the weaker plan. Patrick accuses the House plan of lining the pockets of property, including business owners at homeowners' expense. I have a message for Dave Fallon and the House and anyone else in the Capitol who wants to listen. The Texas Senate and I will not pass a bill that gives $17.6 billion and spreads it across homeowners and all businesses, and by doing so, takes five to $700 every year out of the pockets of homeowners. Bottom line, the House plan would lower the tax rate for all school districts across the state and save every property owner money, something the governor says is a step toward eventually eliminating property tax altogether. Whereas the Senate plan would lower the tax rate some, but would also increase the homestead exemption from $40,000 to $100,000, giving homeowners a bigger permanent tax break than the House plan. In Houston, Shannon Ryan, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Now, before his press conference, I spoke at length with the lieutenant governor about the impasse in Austin and what happens next. Here's the first part of our interview. I'm joined now by Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Lieutenant Governor, thanks for joining us. We want to talk about what's next with regard to this special session and property taxes. I know you have some strong feelings about it. So, Tom, the Senate has voted unanimously twice to give homeowners a $100,000 homestead exemption. It's currently at 40, we would increase it to $100,000. That will save the average homeowner, Tom, um, between $1,250 and over $1,400 per year. Uh, the House plan uh, sent only compression over, and their plan would only save homeowners around $740 a year. So our plan is better for homeowners, better for the average homeowners, and we are not going to yield on that. Uh, we have supported homestead exemptions this entire session. In fact, Tom, when I came in in 2015, people may not remember this, but the homestead exemption was $15,000. I raised it to $25,000. In the last session, we raised it to $40,000. Now we want to take it to $100,000 and a little bit more even for seniors. The House, by the way, Tom, has already voted unanimously 147 to nothing, including the Speaker, on homestead exemptions. So they sent a bill over without any homestead exemptions on the first day of the special session about two weeks ago, and then they went home and quit. They need to come back and do their work, and they need to sign off on a bill that is compression, which reduces the school rate on your school taxes, and homestead exemption. By far, it gives seniors and all homeowners under 65 the biggest uh, property tax cut by far. Again, five to $700 more per year for the rest of your life, and it's permanent. So that's what... Uh, we're sticking with, and uh, we're going to hold the line for the average homeowner out there. So given that the House has already adjourned and yes. sent you a bill that you're not willing 
to put on the floor to a, for a vote. Another special session then seems likely. Is that correct? They can come back to work. Just let them come back to work, Tom. They need to come back and do their job. I, I've talked to a lot of members who have been around a long time, and I've been around now 17 years. It's hard to believe in the Senate as a senator and lieutenant governor, and I don't remember in a special session uh, any chamber uh, basically saying take it or leave it. Uh, and what they were doing, they were saying that to the voters. Because compression, again, people are kind of confused what this is. You have a school tax rate, and compression means we just pay a little bit down on that tax rate. And for every billion dollars we spend, Tom, uh, it saves homeowners about $34 if you use compression. With the homestead exemption, for every billion dollars we spend, it's about $128. That's why our plan is better. So by walking away, they walked away from something they had voted on previously, 147 to nothing. They need to come back and do their work. And, and the homestead exemption, Tom, is permanent for the rest of your life. So for an average homeowner with a 25, 30-year mortgage, that can be fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 or more. We are not walking away from that in the Texas Senate. The House needs to come back, do their work, and accept our bill uh, that either we'll send them back or they need to take our bill and send us our bill. We don't care if it's a Senate bill or a House bill. Just give the average homeowner the biggest tax cut that they can get. And by the way, Tom, just for easy explanation, the compression goes for all properties. So in other words, when you reduce the, the, the cents on your school tax, it's, you take that money and you spread it for homes, businesses, shopping centers, office complexes, you know, everything, including a lot of people would get a tax break who live out of the state of Texas because they own property in Texas. So there's $17.6 billion in the budget that we've set aside, as has the House. We want 30% of that to go to homeowners specifically to add to their tax cut. They want 100% of the 17 to go to everyone. Well, when you take 170 uh, when you take 17 billion, Tom, and you spread it to everyone, obviously homeowners' cut is diluted. So we think we're very fair. There's 17.6 billion. They want 100 percent to go to businesses, and the, and by the way, their tax cut, if you only did compression, goes to the homeowners with the highest incomes. Uh, our tax cut goes to the average homeowner. We're not backing up. We're going to stand up with the people in the, in the Senate. And we are not budging on giving this $100,000 exemption to homeowners. The House needs to come back and get to work and do it. After the House adjourned, you held a press conference. And in that press conference, you called out both the House Speaker asking him to come back. And you also challenged the governor yes. to a debate about this. Yes. Uh, do you stand by that challenge? And have you heard from either the governor or the Speaker since your press conference? Yes. I met with the governor for about an hour and a half last, last week. Uh, and he favors all compression. Uh, we favor compression and the homestead exemption. Uh, the governor did tell me uh, that he would sign any bill that the House and Senate agree to and send to his desk. And I've always believed that. I do not believe Governor Abbott is going to veto a bill that gives homeowners a $100,000 homestead exemption. Think about this, Tom. If you live in the average $331,000 home, that's the average today, you're paying taxes on $100,000 less. If you live in a $250,000 home, you're paying on a home that has is getting a $100,000 exemption. It's it's clear cut, the best for homeowners and the biggest tax cut. Again, five to $700 more per year than the house plan and the governor's plan for the rest of your life. We're, we're not, we're, hell will freeze over before we, we, we walk away from giving the homeowners the biggest tax cut. We're not gonna do it. When we come back, we'll have part two of our conversation with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. And I ask him, who's to blame if property tax cuts don't happen at all? Here's part two of our conversation with Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, during which we discuss at length the future of property tax cuts during this special legislative session. Lieutenant Governor, you're not one to mince words. Is this an issue of policy or personality? It's policy. It's, it's policy. Again, the homestead exemption is worth about $1,200 to $1,400 or more. The House plan is worth about $740. That's policy. The Senate plan is permanent for the lifetime you live in your home. The House plan is not permanent. It's policy. Look, we support giving a, a, a tax cut across the board to businesses. That's why we said we'll support 70% going to everyone but 30% going 
going specifically to homeowners. That's fair. It is not fair to take 17 billion, Tom, the biggest in the history of the world, it'll be the biggest tax cut in the history, and give it across the board 100% to everyone, which dilutes homeowners. Um, we have to take care of the homeowners, and we're going to do it in the Senate. And I believe, Tom, at the end of the day, the House will come back to work, either in this session, they can come back, or in the next special session, and eventually they'll get there, because they've already voted for it, 147 to nothing. What's the problem? If you were a betting man, would you expect that it's going to happen within this first 30-day session, or do you expect that you're going to have to wait and then negotiate this in a subsequent special session, which the governor said he would call? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I was surprised that the House just walked out. You know, they sent us a bill with no home, homestead exemption in it. In other words, the, the House sent us a bill, Tom, and said, you homeowners out there, the average homeowners, you're going to get about five to $700 less than the Senate bill, but take it or leave it, because we're leaving. That's not a way to treat homeowners. So I don't know if they're gonna come back now or come back later, um, but we are not going to abandon the average homeowner out there in Texas, in the Texas Senate. We'll, we'll not do it. I know in your inaugural address in January, you said that you'd hoped for a $70,000 homestead yes. exemption. Now it's up to 100,000. Was this your top priority? for this session? I know there are a lot of priorities, but is this the sure. single one that you kind of hung your hat on? Well, the biggest priority was to fix the grid because we have to be sure we have the most reliable grid in the country. Uh, that's number one uh, in terms of a general policy. In terms of specific policy, property tax cuts and school choice. And by the way, the Senate passed school choice, the House killed it. Uh, so the top three, grid, property tax, and school choice, and the, and the Senate did all three. And we have come together on a grid bill that I'm I, I support, I, I still think we should build an instant reserve, but we didn't have the support uh, to do that in the House. But uh, property taxes are key. Look, Tom, people are struggling out there with inflation. And, and an extra, you know, a, a $1,200, $1,400 tax savings in total from what we've done in the past and what we would do now is significant money for people. And I'm not about to to let the House say, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna take $700 away from the average family out there. Uh, because they have a different idea. That's just not right. So this is top priority, Tom. And and by the way, when we started, this is what's interesting, Tom. When we started, we did have our bill said seventy thousand dollar homestead exemption for everyone under sixty five, and a hundred for everyone over sixty five. And the House, they're the ones who raised it from seventy to a hundred. So they raised it, they voted for it, and now they won't vote for it. Was that all show before? I don't know if it was all show, but they need to show up. And they need to get their members back, and they need either this special session or the next special session. Because, Tom, there's a deadline here. We have to get this bill passed uh, by midsummer because we have to get it on the ballot in November, which I know the people will vote for it, 90 percent plus. But to get it on the ballot, it has to be passed by midsummer because there has to be enough time to get the language on the ballot and distribute it. So we don't have all year to get this done. We have you know, now and you know, maybe another month, and that's about it. So if this passes, whatever it looks like, if property yeah. tax reform does pass in some form, Republicans certainly can take credit for that, given that they hold the governor's mansion, the House and the Senate. Sure. If it doesn't get done, are Republicans to blame for that? If it doesn't get done, uh, it's because the House refused to give homeowners a $100,000 homestead exemption. If it doesn't get done, it's on the speaker. And if it doesn't get done, I think some will say the governor should have stepped up and said, hey, Put this in the bill. Let's get it done. But I, but I, here's how I read it, Tom. Uh, and the governor's been very look. The governor's talking about he has a plan to get rid of property taxes forever. That's a 25 or 30 year plan if it can even happen. People need their money now. Okay, they need their money now, and they need it next year and the following year, not 25 or 30 years from now. So if it doesn't get done, it won't be because the Senate wasn't looking out for the average homeowner. Again, this passed our chamber 31 to nothing back in March. It passed our chamber again in this special session, 30 to nothing. One person was absent. And it passed the House 147 to nothing, including the speaker voted for it. So what the heck's going on here? Uh, what the heck's going on? It's clear this is what the people want. Everyone's voted for it. The governor says he'll sign the bill. So it's up to Dade Phelan, the speaker of the House, and 150 members in the House to get back to work and pass this bill for homeowners. Bottom line. Lieutenant Governor, thanks for joining us. Certainly appreciate it. This week in Texas, we'll be right back.
You've heard from Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick about the Senate's plan. And while Speaker Dade Phelan was unavailable for an interview, we did speak with an economist who says the House plan is the better of the two. Vance Ginn is the president of Ginn Economic Consulting, and he joined us to talk about the virtues of the plan that does not include homestead exemptions, but focuses solely on compression. I think what we're looking at right now is how can we provide the most property tax relief across the state. That's what many Texans are feeling um, at right now as they see their, their tax bills continue to ratchet up. And the House has one plan, the Senate has another plan. And ultimately, I think at the end of the day, what would benefit Texas as a whole, families, whether they have a homestead or other property or a business, or even you know their renting would be compression, which just means reducing the property tax rates instead of the homestead exemption. So I think as of right now, the House bill would be the best benefit for, for Texas across the state. And why is that? Well, the real reason is because it helps all families. I mean, if you have the homestead through the Senate bill, um, that's only had it helping homesteaders. Now, they do have a part that's 10 cent compression, and then they're raising the homestead exemption by 60,000. So the 10 cent compression will, would help families across the state. And then the 60,000 increase in the homestead exemption, which just reduces your taxable value as a homestead, your primary place of residence, that's only helping those individuals. Whereas in the House, bill, the House plan, uh, would have a 16.2 cent compression. So what that just means they're reducing your tax rates by more for every family, no matter if they have a homestead or they're a renter or they have they have a business, they're an employer, all of them would benefit from the House bill. And so I think if you look at broad-based taxes that provide the most economic bang for the buck, it's going to be the House bill as that's written so far. Lieutenant Governor says his issue with all compression is that it would also benefit those who own property in the state of Texas but don't live here, whereas the Senate plan would not only help those people but also give more of a focus to homesteaders. Your thoughts about that perspective? I think at the end of the day, the best tax policy is the broadest base with the lowest rate. And that happens through compression, not through homestead. And if the benefits are going to those who are outside the state, if they have a business here or something else, then that means they're paying lower property taxes so they can charge lower prices, um, they can ha have higher wages for their employees and hire more workers. So I mean, all those things are benefits whether you're lowering property taxes for those that live here or not. And so I think it benefits Texans across the board. And, and at the end of the day, I mean, this is something that I think even the Texas GOP platform says that they want to eliminate property taxes. And this is something that I've been fighting for for a long time, especially the school M&O property tax, to where the state would, would fund 100% of the school finance formulas for the schools that are out there, mainly through sales taxes. And that's not raising sales taxes. That's just using surplus dollars over time like what the governor has talked about, um, Governor Abbott. And I think what you could do is you could eliminate those property taxes in eight to 10 years by lowering the rates through compression, which you can't do through raising the homestead exemption. You just can't eliminate those property taxes. And so this would put us on a glide path to elimination and allow for more economic growth and activity um, and, and ultimately for people to prosper more across the state of Texas. And what would happen, though, if there were a year where we didn't have a surplus? The state would still be obligated to buy down that debt. Well, that's right. And they would be obligated to do that. And we want it to be long lasting and permanent relief, right? You don't want that rate to come down and to go back up. And I think that's what's so important about using a percentage of the surplus dollars. These are surplus dollars that increase the base of the overall budget. And so it continues to grow as you have more sales taxes and other types of taxes that comes in. And so I don't see that that's going to have a huge hit, but let's say it does. You have a rainy day fund that has $27 billion in it right now. Um, it's continuing to grow at a rapid rate. So that could more than cover any sort of decline in sales taxes or other types of state taxes that are collected. Um, you've also got some excess revenue, excess reserves that's on the sideline at school districts that I think that they should also put money in there to make sure that those rates don't come back up. And at the end of the day, it also should be about reining in spending, making sure that spending restraint is a priority so that taxpayers can be the top priority to make sure that this is maintained over time, no matter if there's a revenue reduction or not. And what does your analysis say about the long-term viability of compression only? I think that the viability of compression only is 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 great. That it, it can happen, and you know, within eight to ten years, we can eliminate nearly half the property tax in Texas, which is the school district maintenance and operation property tax. And it doesn't have to raise any other taxes or anything else. This is just using surplus dollars over time to buy down to compress 
the, those rates. And then you can use the rainy day fund or something else if, if there is a downturn in those revenues, which I don't foresee is having a huge effect on that. But it would also bring about more economic growth and job creation and more people paying sales taxes over time. And then we have you know a, a number of people that are moving to Texas every single day because we don't have a personal income tax and everything else. And I think it would make us an even bigger economic juggernaut by eliminating nearly half the property tax in Texas over time, like I said, within about eight years, let's say, um, that you know, no other state could be able to compete with us on that. And as other states across the, the country are lowering their income taxes, flattening their income taxes, even eliminating their income taxes, there's a lot of competition, which is good within the economic system. And so I think that this is a good approach for Texas to use as much as the surplus as possible. I love to see more, to be honest with you. I like to see about 21 billion instead of the 12 billion that they're talking about in new relief or a the largest property tax cut ever. But but right now, I think it is the house bill um, that's superior over the Senate bill. One of the one of the criticisms of compression only is that if if that's where you went, you would need to replace the lost income ultimately with an added sales tax, which is a regressive tax. Do you see that being the case? Or can you avoid raising sales tax, which disproportionately impacts lower income wage earners? So when you have a tax that taxes lower income more than, than upper income people, that's what we call a regressive tax. The sales tax is regressive, but the property tax is also regressive. Even if you look at the, the data from the Texas Comptroller's Office, the tax incidents and tax exemptions report, they show what they call their suits index, so their measure of regressivity, that the property tax is also regressive. And that that method that they use in those calculations can't show what happens to those who can't afford a home because of the higher property taxes, which are mostly lower income people, or those who lose their property because they can't afford them anymore, and that's mostly lower income people. So I think the property tax is highly regressive. But with that said, we don't need to even raise the sales tax. We don't need to raise the rate. You don't need to broaden the base. There are some examples that are out there, like I've even written about that and done research on that if you broaden the sales tax base, you can eliminate the, the school and property tax without even raising the rate. But that's not even what's on the table right now. There's not the political will to get that done you know, overnight, make that happen. Instead, we're just talking about using surplus dollars, not raising any other taxes or anything else, just saying, look, these are excess taxpayer dollars that are collected by the state. They should be returned to the taxpayer. And the best way to, to do that, to get the, the biggest, biggest bang for your buck, is really through lowering those school and property taxes. And so you know, I think this is actually making our system better in, our, in, in Texas, the tax system, and making us more economically competitive overall. And, and ultimately, look, it's, it's better for the Texans, for Texans all across the state. That was economist Vance Ginn. We appreciate his perspective on this topic of property taxes.